inflation? Of course not. It's the war that's doing it. So they use that to justify the inflation and also to distract you from what's really, really happening. But then what happens to gold during these periods of time? Well, we know that when people are uncomfortable and nervous, they go to a flight to safety. And gold dealers swamped by demand as war creates inflation scare. Well, what do you think? Because gold protects you from inflation. And we're going to talk more about that in just a minute. But frankly, gold is playing its age old role as safe haven in times of war and crisis. And people all over the world are piling in and they are. So we're seeing them starting to really flee from the fiat money intangible side into real money gold because that's what protects you. Even according to the BIS, Bank for International Settlements, gold held at home is not subject to political policies. Mm, Yeah, hold it, own it. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. But let's just, let me show you what this really looks like. Because this goes back to 1913 when the Federal Reserve was installed. And if you just take this one little zero away, what do you got? You got your buck. You've got your dollar. And this huge drop off, 50% drop off was because, and I'll show you this in, in real time, but it was because a 20th of an ounce of gold, right? So let me just show you the difference in the sizes. This is an ounce of gold. You can see it pretty good. This is a 20th of an ounce of gold, right? So it used to be that a 20th of ounce of gold backed $1. But when they installed the Federal Reserve, now this little 20th of an ounce of gold backed $2.40. That's why you see this major runoff. But I'd like to also bring your attention down to zero, right? So we can see, now look, It said that the dollar gained purchasing power in 1933 during the the depression in the 30s. Let me ask you a question. In all of your studies and on school and everything, have you ever heard anybody being better off because they could buy more stuff during the depression? And I believe that what we are entering is a hyperinflationary depression. However, having said that, I'd like you to notice that it kind of looks like it's trailing off, but let's take a look at where we are right now because that's from 2008 and clearly it's continuing to go down. And what the rapid inflation really does is it erodes your purchasing power even more quickly. They can do anything they want with paper right? They can make spot gold go up, down, sideways. But the reality is they can even change things and make the inflation numbers look however they want. So, ooh, whoops-de-doo, we're down at 7.7, which is still extraordinarily high, according to the central bank's calculations and how they jury-rig things. But It doesn't matter when you look at the CPI because do you see this purchasing power going up? And besides whether or not you see it, are you experiencing an ability to buy more stuff with the same number of dollars? That would be a no because this is by design and it should be really obvious from my purchasing power graphs. And for those of you that look to you know, who can we talk to about them? This would be it. Now, let me show you in more reality. I'm going to show you this presentation that I did on your ability to purchase using this little itty bitty teeny weeny 20th of an ounce of gold. Can you guys see that? You can barely see it. Okay. And here we go. This, which you can barely see, but you've seen a picture of it, right? Is a $1 gold coin. It is 0.0484 ounces of gold. So roughly, roughly a 20th of an ounce of gold. 
And back in 1913, this would buy nine loaves of bread because back then a loaf of bread was 11 cents. Okay. So you could have bought it with this little gold coin or this silver dollar or this silver certificate. And what does it say on that? Payable to the bearer on demand, one silver dollar, right? So you can see what this all looks like. But then they started the transition. So what did the Fed do? Well, they just started printing and printing and printing, kind of slowly because they had to go through Congress. And what does it say on these? Well, they're no longer gold certificates or even silver certificates, but now they are Federal Reserve notes and a note is a debt instrument. So what I'd really like you to see is how they make this transition. And you see the coins, there's a half dollar and you see it's all silver, you can see that line. Then you can see the transition where no longer is it a full half ounce or roughly a half ounce of silver. It has copper in it with just a little bit, 40% silver. So we went from 90% silver down to 40% silver. But my goodness, kind of looks the same as you can see so they could make that transition and the public didn't realize that anything had changed when in reality in 1971 everything has changed because then everything went to this now you can see how closely the dollar bills the ten dollar bills that from the gold certificate to the fiat money certificates you can see how closely they look because what they know is that people marry the legal money of the state. So people got used to seeing this gold certificate and this silver certificate so that when it transitioned into a fiat certificate, nothing changed. And after all, we were told that if we buy American made products, nothing will change. Of course, they shipped all the jobs overseas for the manufacturing jobs. So everything has changed. And after 1971, it's been constant with that. So this little $1 gold coin, or this silver dollar, or these 10 silver dimes. Now, you know how many loaves of bread this buys? Well, if we do the math, right? So 0.0484 ounces of gold in one in a one dollar gold coin then at a dollar 53 a loaf which is what the bls says the average price of a loaf of bread is would buy you 56 loaves so hold on a second let me get them okay so we've got 9 10 14 25 i am going to donate all these loaves of bread when we're done with this experiment 28 i mean do you get the point it's not that this bread is worth that much more money. It's that the dollars are worth less and less and less. So when you see the price of a stock market going up or real estate going up, is it really that that is worth that much more money? No, it's that because of all of the printing and all of the debt, it's worth that much less. The function of the money today is to get you to volunteer your labor and your work and transfer that their way. So what we're going to talk about is to how to protect your purchasing power, how to protect your real estate values and keep them.